And not just sugar, but also salt drives epithelial damage and injury of the digestive tract because with the tight junctions glue those cells together. And we have a combination of factors here. We have the gluing together of the cells in the, in the, in the lining of our digestive tract and the buildup of the intraepithelial lymphocytes behind the villi of the small intestines, which, are which forms a complex leading to the defenders at the gate of the castle. So our immune system function that surrounds the gut and the integrity of the digestive lining is dependent by healthy eating. We build that integrity of the intestinal lining with good bacteria, creating a heavy biofilm of healthy bacteria over the villi with good tight junctions. And if we wanna destroy that, we eat more meats and sweets. And of course we have more salt and oil. And so you have sugar, salt, and oil, which lead to, which leads to addiction, but also destroys the intestinal digestive tract lining at the same time and increases risk of autoimmune disease too. So salt um, is a significant factor here and people can become uh, um, adapted to a high salt diet. They're excreting a lot of salt through their sweat and through their urine all the time because they're eating so much salt. And they go to exercise to run a couple of miles or to play a game of basketball or tennis. I mean, they get cramping in their legs and they're taking salt tablets because they're getting rid of, because when your body removes sodium and your body's always trying to rid itself of all the extra sodium, it's pulling out other minerals in the process. When you're sweating out salt and urinating out salt, you're losing other minerals besides salt. You're not just, not just only taking out sodium. You can get cramping or, or you know, and drink, try to drink those electrolyte drinks or take whatever you want. But, but the main, but you would, if you really wanted to do things right, you wouldn't take the salt to begin with. So your sweat wouldn't lose salt when you sweat it and you wouldn't be peeing out so much salt and you wouldn't be able to drink all the time and you wouldn't be having to wash minerals out of your body all the time because you because so what I'm saying here is um, your body adapts long-term to a lower salt intake by holding onto sodium and holding onto the minerals in the body. You're not pushing them out all the time and you're not gonna cramp up in the heat or when you're doing a lot of exercise, you're not gonna need to drink all the time to wash away all the extra sodium either. But in any case, we're saying that, that the digestive tract is dependent on healthful foods and your immune system is dependent on the immune system and green vegetables are a major factor fueling the growth of a healthy gut. And if you don't like green vegetables, you better live close to a hospital as if that's gonna help you. But the point I'm making is we're a green vegetable dependent animal like the other primates. And we green vegetables are needed to, to support the development of a healthy immune system and the robustness. And this is why where people are exposed to serious outcomes from infections, even, uh, even something that like COVID didn't have to be a serious infection if we had a healthy population, but nobody was focused on a healthy population. Even with the, even with the um, people dying left and right and seeing that it was killing people that were the healthiest the most, people still didn't eat healthfully and lose weight. Because during COVID, people got even gained, even gained more weight. And now we have even the um, overall lifespan of Americans has even gone down in the, in the last five years. And not even gone down from COVID related deaths, but gone down from other types of causes of death as well. It's just amazing to me that as we learn more and more, people are still doing the wrong things and because their addictions are so severe and, it's, and death is not even enough of a fear to scare them to eat right. And I want you to memorize these 10 words or so, let's count these words, what I'm going to say here now. I want you to memorize this. Raw vegetables have the most consistent and powerful association with the reduction of cancers of all types. That's about 10 words. I might have missed a word or two. So you know, I've reviewed more than 30,000 studies. I have 2,000 references in my book, Eat for Life, for example, but I had to review maybe to get 2,000 references. Maybe I took years reviewing maybe 10,000 articles to pick out those 2,000. But over a period of years, it's, it's getting a full um, review of the, of the world's nutritional literature. And, um, and uh, um, you can say married with clinical experience show that we really, our immune system is really dependent on our body is really dependent on the consumption of raw vegetables, particularly um, lettuce is a superfood. And the mixture between lettuces and raw green cruciferous vegetables like bok choy, cabbage, arugula, watercress, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, that, that combination gives you the ideal balance to the, to the um, bacteria in the gut. And these four, two raw foods, the raw green vegetables, the raw onion and scallion, and the two cooked foods, the cooked mushrooms and the cooked beans build us the healthiest microbiome. So vegetables protect the DNA, of course, 
and green vegetables protect the DNA the most. They'll give an example of the Fiji study on Fiji Islanders showing even though they smoke like fiends, they hardly have any lung cancer over there because they eat so much, they eat a lot of green vegetables. Whereas the Hawaiian Islanders who don't smoke, who, who don't smoke as much have more lung cancer. They don't eat vegetables as much. Veg we're, we're talking here about a vegetable-based diet, not a grain-based diet. Not, you know, so we're talking here about a vegetable-based diet. And if we look at centenarians and we look at lifespan studies, we show that green vegetables and green cruciferous vegetables in particular have no threshold effect. No threshold effect means the more people eat, and as far as the study can be concerned, in higher amounts led to the most probability of people living the longest or living to 100 years old. So maybe with mushrooms and onions and tomatoes, and you may have a threshold effect means that once you have a half a cup of onion or mushroom, you're not going to have two cups. It's not going to make you live longer. You already had a half a cup. Maybe once you had a cup of tomato sauce, having or a half a cup, two cups. Not. But with green vegetables, it's not true. As people went from one cup to two cups to three cups to four cups of green vegetables, you still show enhancement in lifespan. And so many Americans eat no green vegetables. And the total vegetable consumption in America is only 2% of total calories. So I'm emphasizing that vegetables be the major source of calories. And speaking about cruciferous vegetables in particular, take a look at the cell here, because you see that little M in the cell wall that represents that myrosinase enzyme that is not activated or broken or activated and doesn't mix with the central glucosinolates and thus you chew the cell wall open and break the comp, break those little packets. So when you're eating a salad and chewing it really well and are eating broccoli or Brussels sprouts or cabbage or collard greens or bok choy. Bok choy is one of my favorites, things to grow because it grows so easily without insects. You don't get aphids and white flies and, you know, much, um, you know, it's very resilient to disease and easy to grow. You cut it, it's so beautiful looking and you can juice it. You can, you can eat it raw, you can cook it. You can do it it's so versatile too. But I'm saying chew these things very well. Concentrate on chewing, be very mindful because it's breaking open because the isothiocyanides, the ITCs form in the mouth, the better you chew things. Mm -hmm.